Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and this is a riding shoe. Some see it as a convenient crossover piece, and others as a stupid, squiddish safety hazard. It's time to find out who's right. The test subject of today's crash test is the Alpine Stars Fastlane. If you're old enough to watch this video, you're old enough to remember when these first hit our markets back in 2011. The shoe cost about $150 back then. And it still does. Alpine Stars added more ankle armor at some point and started calling it the Faster 2, but in essence they're still making the exact same boot with the exact same ambiguous relationship to motorcycle safety. Our first test is waterproofing, and I think the Alpine Stars Fastlane is going to do better than expected. See, it's actually made from synthetic microfiber, which is supposed to be more water resistant than leather. Next we have sole traction, which should be interesting. And the Fastlane has Alpine Star's laser ablated grip, which basically means they burned a micro rough surface onto the rubber with a laser. It's some Dr. Evil shit, but it's supposed to be brilliant on oily surfaces. <laughs> So let's put that claim to the test. It takes me about 10 seconds to run the Sea World Sprint on regular ground. Anything under 15 seconds on our cooking spray course is supposed to be good sole traction. So 13 and a half seconds is a new lap record here in the crash test lab. Looks like the fast lane does indeed have good sole traction for putting your foot down on oily asphalt. But what if you put your foot down on a nail? Or even worse, what if someone shoots you in the bottom of the foot with a pointed pellet moving at 500 feet per second? That's a serious concern. So it doesn't look like much, but when we went into the shoe, we found the bullet there. And we also found the hole in the sole where it came right through the foot. It's too bad Alpine Star Steel shanked this boot, but they cut it off at the midfoot. So that leaves everything up here totally defenseless. Next, we're going to set our sights on the upper. It looks like carbon fiber. It probably won't protect like that. Straight through the microfiber in one shot. All the carbon fiber printing in the world still ain't going to give you any more protection. Leather typically lasts two shots or more, by the way. You can actually see the bullet came right through and is indented into the other side. So a failing grade for both puncture tests brings us to abrasion resistance. We have a 40 grit belt sander spinning at 19 kilometers an hour to approximate a decent slide on the pavement. Wow, so a minute and 32 seconds to get through this boot. It's actually really impressive. I always presumed that the toe slider on here was just for show, but it never kicked the bucket on me. I ended up going through all this technical fabric and into the boot that way. Even still, the microfiber, very good abrasion resistance, minute and 32 seconds. Now, Golf Town is my favorite place in the Fortnite testing lab because it's where we get to do impact protection. On our end, we have a sandbag foot with 100G shock stickers, and on Alpine Star's end, they have a heel counter, a toe box, and ankle armor. The ankle armor is dual density, basically means it's softer on the inside and harder on the outside. The heel cup, I think, stands a good chance of passing. It's pretty solid. As for the toe box, though, what is this made from Alpine Star's? Play-Doh, cotton candy? I can hardly tell there's a toe box in here at all. So that's ankle, heel, and toe impacts. More than 100 Gs and less than satisfactory on all three counts. Now last time one of you commented that we should test crush strength, which is the type of forward thinking we like to hear at Fort 9. So here we go. Unsurprisingly, the Alpine Stars Fastlane has absolutely no crush resistance whatsoever. Now, it's the first time we've run this test. I don't have any safe standards to hide behind, but even still, I'm going to call that a failing grade for crush resistance, which is a sad note to return to our whiteboard on because we only have the two passing grades so far, meaning that unless the boot passes both of our final two tests, it will be the lowest ever score that we've seen on Fortnite crash test. For the fast lane's sake, I hope that it's heat resistant. And microfiber usually is heat resistant, I mean. 
We saw during the Vorige test that it resisted my torch about as well as leather does. And it looks like we're having the same effect here. No burning, no crackling, no outright flaming. Looks pretty good. Try the toe slider, this is TPR. Makes a pretty color. And try this midsole back here, this is TPU. Oh, melty. And it might burn by itself too. Yeah, there we go. Try some of these reflective eyelets. Nothing crazy going on here. The carbon fiber, microfiber, it's about the exact same as the faux leather version. This is rubber laser ablated to make it grippy. It survived Alpine Star's laser, so I suppose it's bound to survive my torch. Some sort of mesh and foamy liner in here. So for the first time, I was unable to make a fireball out of a piece of gear. Nice work, Alpine Stars. After this, we're on to Fortnite's ninth test, which is build quality, where we ask the question, what still works? The short answer is everything. I mean, this is still a boot. Everything on here is still functioning the way that it should. And of course, in the abrasion test, we did bust apart a couple of the panels that were double stitched, but uh, it's gonna happen. I mean, we ran it over with the company car. Sorry, boss. Um, none of the panels actually came apart there. So yeah, very good. Nice work, Alpine Stars. Passing grade for build quality. So the fast lane earns its fourth check mark, and that also means that it narrowly avoids the bottom of our leaderboard. Four out of nine isn't enough to lord over much, but at least it's enough to brag over the Biltwell Gringo. Next week we have a helmet showdown. It's the $400 Icon variant versus the $800 Showy Hornet X2. I cannot wait to crash test both of these lids because it's America versus Japan, it's DOT versus Snell, and also I've been riding in an Icon variant for the last two years. If you don't want to miss next week's crash test, consider subscribing. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care.